Hello friends, what's going on? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you're doing well. I really do hope that. And welcome back to Chelsea News here in the Stamford Bridge studio. Lots of big stories going around, of course, that we are here to reflect on. A bit nasal today. I've got that post-Christmas illness. Don't worry, it's not the big Rona, but I'm still a little bit bunged up, so you must excuse me if I sound and look a bit rough. <clears throat> anyway... Enzo Fernandez, the Argentinian prodigy World Cup winner, who won uh, the best young player at the World Cup as well, has a buyout clause for 120 million euros, and reportedly Chelsea are prepared to pay that, which would, of course, be a sensational blockbuster move. <clears throat> In fact, Chelsea are reportedly prepared to pay 127 million euros. 127 for this Argentinian midfielder, Juan Two Seven. His name's not Juan, but One Two Seven. That would smash the Romelu Lukaku transfer record that we have set. So we're going to talk about an article talking about that. It's multiple sources now talking about Enzo to Chelsea. Of course, he's linked to loads of big clubs like Liverpool, United, whatever. whatever, 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 whatever. Everyone wants him, apparently. I'm going to give my thoughts on this. So you know, make sure you keep it locked. <clears throat> Also, of course, Reese James injury concerns. We're looking at alternatives. We're going to talk about the Celtic um, uh, Juranovic, uh, Juranovic, Juranovic, excuse me, the Croatian right back who, who could be very cheap, who of course played in the World Cup as well. Uh, Kovacic would like that. Uh, we'll even reference a little bit of Reese James's personal fitness coach's response to him becoming injured. Lots to get into. Thanks for liking and subscribing takes a second you just uh, click the button and you're part of the team you can join as well if you click join underneath the video somewhere down there it's 199 a month join the fun um all right then let's get into it so reese james came off injured he didn't look very happy though he did walk off <clears throat> he looked very upset yesterday in our premier league win against bournemouth 2 nil. michael b jordan's bournemouth we finally found out where wallace was yeah where's wallace he owns Bournemouth, for those of you who know, will know. <clears throat> so, have Chelsea messed up here? Have Chelsea's medical team not highlight, you know, have covered themselves uh, well again? Uh, JR underscore Athletes Edge on Instagram posting on his uh, story, social media, free emojis, the angry emoji, the crying emoji, and the zipped mouth emoji with the text at the bottom saying, I need to bite my tongue despite having a lot, capitals, lot to say. Of course, this would have been reference to Reese James playing and getting his injury. One might decipher from this that Reese James's personal trainer, personal athlete, whatever his name is, um, is upset with how Chelsea have handled um, the Reese James situation and his reintegration back into the team, and therefore we've seen a recurring Injury. <clears throat> so it's his private performance coach, this guy. This is what he's posted. So he's not happy. He's not happy seemingly. And again, I'm not saying this definitively or reporting this. I'm just, you know, look, doing what the rest of us are doing and saying he's looked at this and think, yeah, this is so messed up how you've dealt with Rhys James. And um, regardless of that, one thing's for sure, moving forwards, we've got to be better. Um... When Fafana joined Chelsea, we flew him out to America for his, med his medical. I, I do wonder if the new owners trust the Chelsea medical team. They probably looked at the data and injuries, like they looked at the data and everything else in Chelsea and said, well, this is bad. This is terribly bad. They, 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 couldn't, they were like shocked at how poor the, the data usage at Chelsea was. And I do believe that goes down to like the medical staff as well. So they'll be looking at this. Chelsea's arguably Chelsea's greatest player having a recur recurring injury on the same knee um, off the ball. Uh, yeah, it's no good. It's no, this is the stuff you have to avoid. And if you want to be the best, you've got to have the best medical team. And Reese James's private performance coach, PT, whoever the hell he is, is seemingly upset as well. Mm. So, <clears throat> before we talk about Enzo Fernandez and this 
Hamburg Chelsea bid. Let's jump over to the, sorry for this, Mail Online to talk about how Chelsea are considering looking at alternatives. Chelsea are ready to accelerate their long, okay, so long-term interest in Celtic right-back Josip Juranovic after Reese James limped off against Bournemouth. So it could be um, available for as little as £8 million. <clears throat> now I'm listening. If you said to me Celtic right back, I'd be like, meh. You know, like, is he going to be better than Azpilicueta? Like, is he going to be better than, like, an auxiliary? Is he going to be better than Trevor Chalaber playing right back? Who can play right back, by the way? He'll be a bit more defensive, but he'll be fine uh, sometimes. You know, <clears throat> you know, there's a lot to consider. You could probably move over one of the left backs or whatever. Like, how, you know, but, but for 8 million, 8 million, that's cheap. That is cheap. So let's see what we're saying here. Chelsea are ready to revive their interest in Celtic right back Josip Juranovic as they await the news on the extent of Reese James's injury setback. So of course he he came off, he he limped off, and and obviously that same injury ruled him out of the World Cup, and now he's got a recurring aggravation. It looks like of the same injury. The news is set to see Chelsea accelerate their long term interest in Croatia international Juranovic. I did not know we have a long-term interest in him, but this article has said a few times we have a long-term interest in this right back. The 27-year-old who was named in the World Cup team of the tournament. Hot dog, I didn't know that. Okay, Kovacic's teammate. He's 27 years old. He was named in the World Cup team of the tournament. He came third in the World Cup. You know, he could cost as little as eight million pounds. Um, Celtic are understood to be open to listening to offers for their star uh, defender during the January transfer window with, you know, growing Premier League interest, as you can imagine, probably because of the, the World Cup. The Scottish club have already agreed a deal to sign the right back Alistair Johnson as an MLS club at Montreal. OK, so they've already got a, a, uh, a replacement for him. So I guess for Celtic, eight million pounds is like... You know, it's, it's no, it's nowhere near Premier League money. So when you get an offer for eight million, maybe, maybe that's like a, a deal you do, right? Chelsea were interested in Juranovic during the summer window, and a deal could be wrapped up quickly once the transfer, the January transfer market opens. Juranovic was unquestionably one of the best defenders at the World Cup. Um, his performance against Brazil, in which he largely nullified Vinicius Junior, was particularly eye-catching. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, suddenly. As I read this article, I'm becoming more and more interested in this guy that I really know very little about. Um, he's now set to move to England with Chelsea, among others, readying an approach. Interesting. Okay, okay, Juranovic. 27 years old, so he's, what, five years younger than Azpi Laqueta. He, uh, clearly in form, won't cost a lot of money. Kovacic can get in his ear. Kovacic had an incredible World Cup as well. Like, an incredible World Cup. And maybe he can say to him, look, bro, come to West London. Unfortunately as well, Kovacic is one of the players that hopefully really likes Chelsea. <laughs> he's not like these, like, Hakim Ziyech, Christian Pulisic scenario where we're trying to sign and maybe Americans or, you know, Moroccans. Kovacic is one player of the season, like, a few years ago <clears throat> before Mason Mount started tearing up. He's been consistently good. When he's not injured, he just plays all the time. Uh, and I think he's very happy in West London with his wife, his beautiful wife, hashtag jealous. And uh, yeah, man, so maybe he'll be like, come on down, brother. Come on down to Chelsea. Yes, if Reese James is fit, you might not start, but bro, plenty of competitions, plenty of opportunity. I was saying to Matisse yesterday on the byline, like, you know, Reese James, he's such a good player that there'll be times where, you know, so that maybe Reese James can play anywhere along the right flank and even play in midfield and there'll be opportunities. There'll just be a, a deputy right back, there'll be opportunities. Um, you know, and you'd probably be ahead of Azpilicueta by all accounts. So let me know what you think about the Reese James injury and let me know what you think about um, Dranovic, the uh, the Croatian Celtic right back, the 27-year-old. Should we buy him in January? Um, literally be four or five times cheaper than Denzel Dumfries, who, by the way, can be really good, but at the same time, he can be quite bad. I mean, he's strong, he's fast, he can score, he can assist, so off the bat, you think, okay, yeah, get, uh, get me Denzel Dumfries. But, um... Yeah, maybe, maybe maybe this Croatian chap is the answer. Maybe he's the answer. Let's move on and talk about Galactico Starboy. 
Enzo Fernandez has Chelsea ready to smash transfer record, but Benfica assistance gives Man United and Liverpool hope. So this is by Duncan Castles, of course, transfer journalist. Lots of people want Enzo Fernandez. Like I said, he won the best young player of the World Cup. He, um, it, it, before the World Cup, his profile was rising and rising and rising. People were talking about him. And then, like, you know, he didn't start in the Argentine team and then he got into it. Excuse me. And then uh, they didn't look back and they won the World Cup. Now, you know, he, you know, it was largely messy as World Cup, but this, he was very much star boy, wasn't he, of, uh, of the World Cup. So let's jump into Duncan Castle's article. He's saying Chelsea are prepared to pay a club record transfer fee for ben- to Benfica in order to bring World Cup winning midfielder Enzo Fernandez to the to Chelsea, essentially. Record Sport understands that an offer in, in excess of 127 million uh, Benfica took for the two ni- 2019 sale on Joe Felix has been proposed by Chelsea's new owners for the Argentina International. Oh, okay. So Chelsea, because Benfica sold um, uh, Joe Felix for 127 million euros. So it was 120 million pounds at the time or something. I mean, that's crazy money. Of course, Joe Felix would be available for a permanent for a lot less than that now because his contract's run down. And uh, he's sort of fallen out of favour at at Atletico Madrid, which has caused problems and therefore made him available for a sort of, you know, inverted commas, affordable amount. Crazy stuff. Um, I'll I'll talk a bit more about Enzo in just a second. Uh, Joe Felix, Benfica currently on course to win the Portuguese league for the first time in four seasons. And in the last 16 of the Champions League, do not want to jeopardize those twin campaigns by selling Fernandes mid-season. Ah, Chelsea hope the midfielder will push the Lisbon club for an immediate move as they seek to turn around a difficult season under Todd Bowley's leadership. Yeah, but there's sort of, you know, lots of things to consider there. Fernandez's performances at the Qatar World Cup and during his first half of the European foot um, this European football <clears throat> has been such that the 21-year-old has established himself as an alternative to Jude Bellingham among clubs looking to recruit in central midfield. Of course, Jude Bellingham would cost similar money, wouldn't he? Pretty much similar money. With Liverpool, Manchester United, Paris Saint-Germain and Real Madrid all keen to take Bellingham from Borussia Dortmund in the summer, Benfica believe they can retain Fernandez until the end of the season and still secure a fee in excess of 80 million euros from the for the player, excuse me. Signed from River Plate for an initial fee of 10 million euros in June. Ah! Why don't we sign these players? 10 million euros in the summer. Now, what, 120 in six months? Absolutely sickening. (laughs) Fernandez started every one of Benfica's Liga Portugal games as the club uh, established an eight point lead at the top of the division. The midfielder also scored twice in the Champions League to help Benfica secure a knockout round tile with Club Brugge which, by the way, is a great tie for them, before making seven appearances during the Argentina's successful World Cup campaign. Fernandez returned to Lisbon on Tuesday and is due to discuss Chelsea's approach with his current employers. Mm. Benfica, who are contracted to pay 25% of the midfielder's next transfer fee to River Plate. So, by the way, River Plate are laughing. <clears throat> they are loving this because they got the original 10 million, which they thought, oh, kid, a kid made us 10 million. And then suddenly they might get an extra 25 plus million. Incredible. Are understood to be open to agreeing terms of summer sale. Mm. So, let's talk about this. It's a high-profile, talented midfielder. Now, you know me, I'm always talking about how important the midfield is, and if the midfield is working, we are cooking. Is it worth spending over 120 million euros on this young player who's had a good half season in, like, what, the seventh best league in Europe? (laughs) Well, what's, what's league in Nando's at the minute? This is not top five. But you could say maybe it's sixth. Because uh, what's after it? You've got the Eredivisie. you got the, um, I suppose you've got the Portuguese league. Yeah, so six, sixth or seventh best league or whatever. To be honest, I think the Eredivisie is better because they've got like IX, PSV and the other good. Hey, whatever. You could argue about that. That's not the point. I, the, I actually think the championship is better than a lot of these. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking about that. Point being, do we spend that much money on this kid? Or 
Should we spend a lot of money on maybe like a, yeah, a league prove again, unsexy, but a Declan Rice who we know can play CDM in the league and just immediately make our midfield better and stronger. We've got number eight style players like Mason Mount, Kovacic, Conor Gallagher, Chuck Wameka, Cesare Cassidy eventually. Do you spend 130 million euros on Enzo Fernandez? Maybe you do. <clears throat> Excuse me, maybe you do. Like, again, similarly like the whole Joe Felix situation, if we buy him, you get excited because you just do. You spend a lot of money on a shiny toy. You want to see it. How's it, how's it going to go? But is it the answer? I'm Look, this is a lot of people reporting Chelsea are making moves for him. Of course, um, Chelsea will just keep spending money, apparently, which I guess is a good thing, ultimately. I think we need to build from the ground up in terms of appropriate profiles and joined up thinking in terms of a footballing philosophy which is a new thing for us but it's all very important let me know what you think put out to you guys enzo fernandez yes or no what do you think we should do in terms of the midfield thank you for joining me today sorry i've been a bit croaky and coffee but i'm ill but if you want to make me feel better drop a like on the video and you're welcome to subscribe other than that friends i look forward to seeing you on the next one so take care of yourselves peace